How's it going all? It's Than from Tidal Gardens. This video is all about taking a closer look at Acropora. They're one of the most popular SPS corals out there and also happen to be a coral that induces endless frustration for me. So before we get into my issues with this coral, it's first fair to say that Acropora has an iconic standing in the SPS world. If coral reef types had a logo like a major sport, Acropora would be Jerry West. In fact, one could argue that when people talk about SPS, they're really just talking about Acropora. Think for a second when people talk about what SPS corals need. High light, high flow, super stable water conditions, needs tons of calcium and alkalinity. They aren't talking about Pavona. No, no, they're talking about the fuzzy sticks. Much of what I just rattled off isn't even true for most of the other varieties of SPS such as Bird's Nest or Pasilopora. Those strict requirements are pretty much geared only towards keeping acros. So despite my problems over the years with Acropora, their place in this hobby can't be questioned. They basically have an entire type of reef system all to themselves. Now for my issues with keeping Acropora. They are arguably one of the most difficult mainstream corals to keep. I say mainstream because there's some niche corals and gorgonians that are non-photosynthetic filter feeders that are currently borderline impossible to keep. So compared to those things, Acropora are not that bad, but compared to just about everything else in the hobby, Acropora can pose some significant challenges. First and foremost, they are some of the most demanding corals with regard to light. Over the years, we found that the vast majority of corals not only do not need a lot of light, but they actually thrive in low light conditions and tend to struggle in highly lit tanks. Acropora love light, and they require both great intensity and great spectrum, which is why sometimes you may hear hobbyists dissatisfied with the colors that they get from Acropora. Disappointing color is certainly bothersome, but it's not nearly as bothersome as the whole colony suddenly dying. Acropora are famous for doing exactly this. If you have ever heard the acronyms STN and RTN, they're talking about ways that Acropora die horribly. STN stands for slow tissue necrosis, and RTN stands for rapid tissue necrosis. An acro colony might be doing great for months and practically overnight come down with one of these ailments and just take a dive. It's not perfectly understood why STN and RTN happen, but once it sets in, it's practically impossible to recover. What most reef keepers do is frag the colony and hope that some of the cuttings survive. Many extremely talented aquarists have gone through this when keeping Acropora. Acropora also attract their fair share of bugs. The two most common are red bugs and Acropora eating flatworms. Red bugs, as you might imagine, look like tiny little red spots on the coral. It's not exactly clear whether they can actually kill the coral, but they're kind of like a flea infestation that could prevent good polyp extension. It's not the end of the world, but they're very annoying. Red bugs can be eradicated by a dip in a solution of bear insect killer or a prescription pet medication called Interceptor. If you prefer a natural approach, a beautiful pipefish called a dragon face pipefish is known to eat them. Acropora eating flatworms, on the other hand, are a very different story. These things can kill colonies fast and spread far and wide. The way you can tell if they're there is you can start to see some white spots on the Acropora skin, almost like little bite marks. If you were to take that coral and dip it in Coral RX or a similar pest solution, I'm willing to bet that it's going to start raining flatworms out of that colony. It's a crazy sight because the flatworms usually look just like the skin of the Acropora, so they're basically invisible. But once they start falling off the coral, they're very noticeable, and it can be really surprising because of their sheer number and their size. Some of them are roughly the size of perhaps three or four of the polyps put together. Now that I've gone on and on about some of the challenges associated with Acropora, my general advice is actually very simple. Strive towards providing them as stable and consistent an environment as possible. Even if your tank lighting and chemistry isn't perfect, it's far more important that they stay consistent. 
In fact, that's actually the biggest obstacle that we have keeping Acropora out in a greenhouse. There's extreme changes that happen from season to season, and Acros do not like drastic changes at all. It's always going to be a process with keeping Acropora, but it's also one of the rewarding aspects of this hobby. When you overcome some of the challenges to keeping a particular coral, you get the instant gratification of a beautiful reef tank staring back at you when you're done. I guess in the end that's what keeps us Aquarius coming back for more and more Acropora, despite all the frustration over the years. Okay, that's it from here. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates. If you missed our last video in Montipora, you can click the annotation here. If you'd like to purchase an Acrofrag from us, you can check out our website and see if we have any what you see is what you get corals in stock. Take care guys.